Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance. Let's see what happens. Because I need to live with you in reality to see if you accept me in reality, if me accept you in reality. Well, why couldn't you tell me, gee, Debbie, why don't you come and I'll see if I can accept you in reality or not? Why didn't you say something like that? Because if I said to you this, he wouldn't just call me. Okay, to catch you up, Debbie is recently in Morocco to see Osama, and they've been together, if I look at my notes, for three years. They met in person after three months online, and there's a pretty big age difference. And she is coming to Morocco because she believes that they're going to get married and she's going to stay in Morocco. And they've had some conversations about where they're going to live, and they seemingly did not have a conversation of that prior, or at least a solid conversation about that. She is probably going to, you know, Osama's saying, you're going to live with me and my family. And then he starts to say, you can stay here. So she's asking, you know, what's the plan? And he's like, you can stay here for as long as you want, one month, two months. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, like one month, two months, 50 years or what? Where's the, where's the cutoff point? And then he starts to reveal that he does not want to get married right now. And he wants her to go back home. Not that he does, not that he wants to have, because it, it's just kind of confusing. He Now, maybe there's a strategy there and there's, you know, you know, me, there's nothing wrong with that plan, that prudent, careful plan of getting to know someone for a long period of time before you decide to commit to them. But Debbie is confronting him and saying, but you never said that. <laughs> I got rid of everything in my hometown of Georgia, not hometown, but state of Georgia. And I had to really bother my kids. They were yelling at me the whole time. And now you're telling me that this is just a vacation and I have to go back. What's happening right now? And then he says, confirms that he did in fact deceive and lie to her. Just lie. And he says, yeah, well, I didn't tell you that because you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have came. So under some circumstances, like when Rishi did this, I don't know where that video is in relation to this one, but Rishi admitted that he lied to Jen about his parents trying to set him up with other uh, women wives. And he said he was really sorry. And he said, yeah, I'm sorry. I just, I didn't want to tell you that because I didn't know if you would actually still want to be with me or something like that. And he's trying to reassure her, no, I mean, I... I want to be with you and I will reject my parents, but I have to kind of go along with it. I mean, I don't know. Rishi doesn't really describe it that well to my ears. You know, I, the, usually what I'm sort of looking for is someone to say, look, I'm with you hundred billion percent. I just have to play a game with my, I mean, I mean, he's kind of saying that anyway. So, you know, that's lying and that's not okay, but it's on the level of deception or the level of concern, I would say, much lower than this, because this sounds like Osama might not even want to be with Debbie. Now, maybe Osama changed his mind this time upon seeing her and having to commit or thinking about the long term. I don't know, but that's pretty awful. So Debbie is, you know, understandably upset. Well, how do you think I feel now? How, what, what do you think it's like to be sitting over here looking like a fool? Why didn't you say, Debbie, don't pack all your stuff? Why didn't you say, Debbie, slow down? Yes, because, you know, if things go good, as we will, we will get married in the end. You really screwed up big time. <laughs> I, I mean, it, I'm not laughing. I'm, the, the, she phrases things very effectively. There's a very Debbie way of talking. And I, I think <laughs> that should be on a T-shirt or something. You know, sometimes people will send me the stickers or the you know, the magnets for your fridge, and there'll be the memes, you know, the I love you 50%. What was it again? Uh, you know, uh, you're lazy, and Nicole. Anyway, those ones, <laughs> I'm not great at remembering. But that's, you know, you really screwed up big time, Osama. <laughs> anyway, point is, is that, uh, yeah, yeah, she's, so, yeah, what does she do with this? I mean, I guess... If they, I mean, she seems to be really into him and who knows what the future holds, but if they are into each other, I guess if I were Debbie, I would be like, okay, well, you know, you're not going to live, I'm, I'm not going to let you live this down for a long time because that was pretty awful 
why would you lie to me? You could have just, and she even said that earlier. I don't know if I included it. She said, you could have just told me that I'd come out for a couple months. That would have been fine. But that's not what you told me. You told me we were going to get married and I was going to stay here for the rest of my life. So I dropped everything. You could have just, I've come to Morocco before. <laughs> why did you do it this time? Then I wonder, was it the show that he was deceiving? Was he trying to get on the show? Because I think that's a major premise. I don't think the show wants to have people on the show who are just dating overseas. I think the marriage is always the, the part of it. It's the fiance part of the 90 day fiance title. Yeah, I mean, I guess at this point, Osama is a bit of a mystery. He hasn't been uh, featured a lot on the show yet. And he talks in a way that is hard to decipher what's going on with him. I don't know if he is immature or something's going on with him or he isn't. Maybe he's perfectly mature for his age. I don't know. It's hard for me to gauge based on what they've shown us. And of course, it's a different culture. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, th this seems to exhibit a possible naivete on his part that he just figured, you know, because that's what a child would think. They'd say like, well, I don't know. I just, you wouldn't come. So I just told you, I just lied to you because that's what I wanted. Because he, he doesn't seem to be, I don't know. Is he tricking her? What's going on? You really screwed up big time, Osama. <laughs> <laughs> There's some some memes that they just pop out at you, don't they? I feel like there should be a database online of all the memes that comes from the show. I mean, they're so good. Why? It's like shame on you. Why? Because I said the truth. I was just want to get maybe the real, but we have to be in reality. After three years, you have the audacity to say that to me? Three years in social media. Fine, Osama. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly everyone can make their own choices around that. You're not going to get a lot of argument from a crowd of people. That doesn't give you the right to lie to Debbie and say you're coming out here. Now, I, I don't, we don't know exactly what he said, but they clearly agree that he lied and deceived her. And she thought she was coming for good. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. And not in reality, not in person, I think is what he means, or not you know, having a relationship where it lasts long, a, a while together, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Why lie to her then? <laughs> not in reality. I've spent oh, yes. enough time in your reality. I know that you feel hurt. You lied to me. No, it's not a lie. You lied because to me. Because I'm still, I'm still want to marry you. You know what? I don't believe you anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, sometimes I have a gauge on whether or not she is overreacting. I, I don't know. I, I, given what we know, and of course she knows him a lot better, but I could see there being a lot of data to contradict that, that he does want to be with her eventually, and maybe he's just having cold feet or or he just wants more time. There seems to be, there should be like a taxonomy of people on the show because I'm reminded of, there's elements, not, of course, and personality-wise, but certain themes that are similar to Summit, of Jenny and Summit, where he would say a lot of things, Jenny would come out, and then he did a bait and switch and would suddenly say, like, well, now we have to do this. And she'd be like, so I have to go back home? What? There, there seems to be a theme there. And I wonder if, it, if it's something about their personalities. Like, they are indecisive. They're anxious. They go into denial about things. I don't know. I love you, you as, as you. the first time. I mean, there is nothing changed in our love. I don't believe you. And that's the destructive result of lying. When you deceive someone, when you just flat out lie to them, and I think the lie was, it's not just like one time lie, right? Did you get milk from the store? And you're like, yes, I did when you did it. That's just a one time lie. Presumably they had multiple conversations around at least the implication of a forever together and her staying out in Morocco. So it, it, it's, a, it's a whole campaign. You could argue it's thousands of lies. And when you suddenly discover that, you think naturally, logically, you think, well, I can't believe anything you say. Because <laughs> if you're capable of just bald-faced lying to, to me so many times, then 
how do I know anything you say is true? I speak the language of donkey, I think. Let me try it. We have to bench because the sunway goes on. But I want to ride the donkey. I have always had an affinity for animals, and I connect with them. Yeah, uh, Debbie's a, a delightful person. There's been a lot of scenes she's met the family. There was a worrying scene that the family seemed surprised that she wasn't bringing him to the United States. It seems as though uh, Osama has been telling his family that he's definitely going to the States. He's, it, it, he's always wanted to go there. The sister seemed to indicate that Osama doesn't fit in in his community and thinks maybe he would fit in better in the United States. It seemed like the sister and the family felt felt bad for Osama, that he was bullied a lot. Maybe that's why he's still at home. I don't know. Or uh, it's not unusual for people to be at home at his age. He's 24. But the, uh, the feeling I got, even from him, is that he doesn't have any friends. He doesn't integrate well. He doesn't, I don't think he works, right? So the family seemed surprised and... We've also seen some scenes where he wanted her to go back to the United States. He didn't, he didn't want her to stay in Morocco. And that might have been his way of, I don't know, either getting rid of her because she was saying that she wanted to live there, or maybe he wants her to bring him with, I don't know. But we're seeing Debbie now have, uh, I don't know, she, she's a character, the way she talks. and. I don't know if people are diagnosing her with anything, but uh, there's really nothing that you could say that is a label in the DSM or even in the clinical language. I mean, she's quirky. She's eccentric. There are certain personality disorders or tendencies that have that as a quality, but she doesn't fit the other criteria. At least there's no other data to, to support that. And we have a thing in our society, I think particularly today, that if anyone is a little quirky or a little eccentric or a lot eccentric that we will pathologize it. We will look for some, something's wrong with the brain, something's different about the brain. And in my field, we don't really have a system of uh, at least a, a solid concrete system of describing people that act outside of the norm unless it's a problem. And the way she acts is in my estimation, not a problem. It's it's different. It's noticeable. It the way she talks is is also kind of interesting, and not just the accent from where she's from, but also just her the way she enunciates things. You know, it's everyone has a different way of talking. There could be something involved with that, but there's no reason to label it. There's no reason to pathologize it. There's no reason to otherize it. It's just her. Everyone has a different personality, a different demeanor. Everyone comes from a different place in life, in the world, different time. And so, you know, she just has this. I will say that it is noticeable. I mean, if we just talk about personality in general without thinking of pathology, that she's very out there. Whatever is in her head, she says. She has a lot of uh, goodness. She, you know, Her impulses are gentle and kind and complimentary. She compliments any chance she can get. And then she sees an animal. She's very fascinated. She's, she also doesn't seem to be self-conscious, right? She either isn't self-conscious. She knows that people are judging her, but she doesn't care. Or she doesn't notice that people are judging her. Or she doesn't care to notice or something. And, you know, there's, we can all learn from Debbie along those lines. I mean, we all have an inner Debbie inside of us. I would hope we all have an inner Debbie. Be inside of a, you know, <clears throat> it's kind of a, a like a childishness, right? <clears throat> I don't think she's a child, but there's a, a the way that children will act, the way a, a four year old will just, you know, y you'll see a four year old at the grocery store just kind of doing a little dance or something, you know, or singing a song or uh, talking to a donkey, and you don't think of anything because you know they're four or they're playing with their toys. And why do we lose that? We often will say, well, when you get mature, you don't do that anymore. You, you, you stopped acting like a child. And yeah, that could be said. But, you know, another angle to this is that we are shamed to get rid of that. And we want to do that, <laughs> at least at times. And so you could say that she doesn't have that, uh, that pretense. We did learn a bit about her history and that she did go through some things. And so maybe 
she decided, you know what, I'm going to stop doing that, or she just never developed that, or I don't know. But there is something delightful about her, and 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 he, I can't figure him out. I don't know. We don't have a lot of data on him. I think there's a chance that he saw a chance to get out of Morocco, which I think clearly the family and him have that as a goal, and then once he was talking with her online and it became clear that she didn't want to stay in the States and she wanted to come to Morocco, I, I could imagine him thinking, oh, crap, wait, what? Because you can imagine him loving her but also wanting her to get him out of Morocco. And then he doesn't know how to ask for it. He doesn't seem like the most assertive sort of fella. Or he felt like if I say something, it'll seem like I'm trying to scam her. So he just kind of, you can imagine him just kind of freezing in place, like, I don't know what to do. And then he just sort of proceeds with the relationship. And when she arrives and she's like, I'm moving in, he's thinking, uh, I don't know what to do. And he kind of just d does not compute kind of a thing. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know. The more I say that, it seems like a high candidate on the hypothesis list. Not too fat. Oh, Osama. Okay, Osama, slow down, please. My, I don't have a butt. God didn't give me a butt, Osama. <laughs> God didn't give me a butt. Um, what did that have to? I guess if you had a, a butt, you'd have a bigger kind of platform to establish some friction with the saddle. Is that what she's saying? Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't show the scene where she was singing to the donkey for a long time. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can imagine it getting a little to be a bit much to be around her, but I could also see it being liberating. You know, there's, there's just nothing. Um, she just doesn't put any pressure. You know, she doesn't say you have to sing with me or you. <laughs> me and Osama have these wonderful deep conversations via texting. And now it's like, do I have to get out my phone and text him to have these honest heart-to-heart -heart conversations? Now that I'm here, large in person, I'm getting nothing, man. I'm getting nothing. Yeah, I don't know if that's this is the case, but I have worked with couples where, ironically, because normally you think of texting as not as vulnerable or not as effective at communicating how you feel or understanding what people are thinking. But, and certainly we can just generally say that, but for some people talking in person, eye contact it, and having to think on the fly, cause you know, when you're talking in person, you have to, there's a certain time limit in terms of how quickly you have to respond. I mean, it'd be weird if, you, if you're in a, an intense conversation and someone says, um, how do you feel about me? And and then you literally wait for 20 minutes just thinking. <laughs> it, it, certainly, if you told someone you needed that much time. But with texting, at the very least, it gives a chance for the person in their own world without having to worry about eye contact, having to worry about pressure, having to worry about a, a, you know necessarily a time constraint or email or something like this. And uh, I have worked with couples where I will find that at least an interim communication venue that seems to work might be over asynchronous um, or texting, email, this kind of thing. And what they will report to me is that when they talk in person, everything goes wrong. But when they are texting or emailing, everything goes right. And some people will even say that. They'll say, like, I feel like my partner is a completely different person over email and text. And when we I talk to them in person, I, I get this completely different version of them. <laughs> And uh, uh, now, hopefully, you can get to a place where you can talk in person in a way that, because uh, usually what's happening is the person who can only communicate well over texting is that they get very anxious when they're in person. They might not even know they're anxious, but uh, they might be so anxious they don't know they're anxious, if you know what I'm saying. So um, they are in a state of anxiety and worry and concern, and they're all uptight and that restricts their ability to think and to act and they're defensive. Whereas if they get a text, they can relax, think straight, be differentiated, be, have empathy, show empathy. Um, now, the flip side of this is I've also worked with couples who will come to me, describe a big fight they've been in, and I will think, whoa, 
That was a big one. And then sometime later, they will say, yeah, so I texted back. And I'll be like, wait, wait, wait. So this whole text, this whole fight was over text? Is that what I'm hearing? And they'll be like, yeah, yeah, I was at work and she was at work. And so we were just going back. I was like, wait, so every, this whole fight that we've been talking about has been over text? <laughs> and they'll be like, yeah. And I'll say, uh, so let's break this. And often what I will find is that in error, they will think that texting is a an effective or a worthwhile way of communicating. My dogs are barking at the neighbors. Th that you can communicate uh, those subtle things because you know, and I've seen it many times. You know, uh, someone will text something like, you know, say, person A says like, "You really hurt my feelings yesterday," and then person B says, uh, "Yes, I, uh, I understand that." And the receiver, uh, you know, person A, hearing that, yes, I understand that, they're in a, such a hurt space that without any uh, nonverbals, they might think of it as sarcastic or blowing them off, where the person sending it might be going, you know, like, let me demonstrate the nonverbals. Yes, I understand that. Versus, yes, I understand that. Or, yeah, I understand that. All right, there's different nonverbals, meaning completely different things so without the nonverbals, unless you're really good with emojis, you might uh, have miscommunicate and then you spiral out of control. So for some couples, texting works well. And for the people where it works better than in-person communication, it's almost like when you lose a sense, you become better in your other senses that I find that people who are more effective over text, they know how to use that form much better. They can communicate more effectively. They're more, uh, they're more effective at understanding over text what is being said to each other over that venue. So, and not always, of course, but so I wonder, you know, if, if I were her friend, I'd be like, well, give it a shot. Text him, <laughs> it, maybe it'll work. Right now, I just wanted you to sketch an outline of our future. And we just started, I mean, I will not do everything in one day. Are you crazy? We will not do everything in one day. You are sick. You have like a mental sickness or something. What? It takes time. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while, I think that's got to end up being a meme that we'll call upon five years from now. What? Yeah. Yeah. So she is arriving in Morocco to live. They don't know where they're going to live. She doesn't want to live with him and his family, and she just wants to have a conversation about the future. And he is always blowing her off, and now he's calling her crazy because she wants to have a conversation about the future. I mean, he could say say something like, "Well, I don't know what. What do you want? Here's what I want. I don't know. Let's 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 brainstorm." Yeah, you're not committing to anything if you're talking about potential futures or what you, you want. And I don't think Debbie is that pressuring at all. So to call her crazy, you know, what's going on with this lady? Yeah, I think he is showing a side of him, perhaps, of he's angry. And it's possible, though, that he doesn't know how to navigate it. I don't know. He seems to indicate, indicate there's something going on with him that might make it harder for him to navigate everything that's happening. I don't know where this is coming from. It could be a decision he's making, or he could just be frustrated. He doesn't, you know, like I can imagine him, he doesn't want to lose her. Let's assume that. He wants to go to the United States, but he doesn't really know what to do. And he feels bad, and he feels scared, and he doesn't know. So he just wants to do his painting, and she's interrupting him and saying, let's talk about things. And he feels like anything that he says in response to her question will cause her to get upset or he doesn't know how to articulate himself. And so he just resorts to this, like, get off my back. I've been telling you. That's the way it kind of looks to me. I want to talk about serious things and you act like, a, oh, you're crazy. You're mentally ill. So we talk about the plans. Our plan is you will come here and bring me to the USA and I will go to work there and we start our life there. We can guarantee the future here. This is our plan. And I will, from this day, never change it. Okay. Mm, yikes. So this can't feel good to Debbie. 
and is, I think this is kind of out of the blue for her that he wants to go to the States. I think this is the first time he's actually saying this directly to her. And he's barking at her. <laughs> Yikes. You know, if he wants to say, hey, I love you, I want to be with you. I hate it here. <laughs> Can we just go to the States? I don't, I don't, there's no opportunity here. I, I'm not like anyone here. I feel like I would flourish in the United States. Can't we just try it? You know, that'd be different than if you don't accept this, then you can, you know, F off. Yeesh. If we don't accept this, we can't stop all this. Yeah. I think there's still a possibility that he actually does love her, but doesn't know how to assert himself. And so he feels, you know, it's like a childish way of saying things like, no, I'm, I'm not going to leave this, this grocery store until you get me some candy or I'm going to run away from home. I, I don't know. Like, there's a possibility that something like that is happening or some other possible th reason that could explain this that also includes that he actually does have affection for her. But the other <laughs> explanation of this, of course, is that he doesn't give a crap about her and never did. That's, that's how it goes. My plan is to get visa, come with you, work here, because if I work there, I can make lots of money to make off studio art, because there, art is valuable, and here, art not valuable. So you will bring me to the US, because for me, as a painter, as a poet, there is no future for me here. Interesting. Yeah, uh, to make money as a painter and a poet in the United States is not easy. <laughs> I, I, I'll, take it, I'll take his word for it that he has a greater likelihood of making money in the United States, but it's hard. <laughs> it's not easy. That Osama's main agenda was for us to get married and move to the United States for him to get a green card. When did that come up in our three years of conversation? I'm using every last bit of my self-control not to knock him into next week. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think she is serious, right? Maybe he'll turn this around. And of course, the the son, her son, is has been right all along. Like, really right. <laughs> he was sure that Osama was scamming her. And, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of that in there. But now it looks like it's been totally a scam the whole time, right? I, I, although, I don't know, I'll hold out for him. He just really wants to get the States and he loves her, maybe. For me because you love me enough. No, you've done me dirty. You're nasty. You're not honorable. What? You're you're creepy, man. Yeah. I'm creepy. I'm bad. I'm ugly. I'm mother. I'm son of bitch. Okay. It's got good for you. We were planning to go to the USA. Yes or no? No. No. It's not. Okay. Well, now they're sitting together, and this is some time later. So, what does that mean? <laughs> is he just angry that he thought that they were going to the states, and he? actually still does want to be with her? It's not about a visa. Yeah, I'm a liar. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. Here's what we talked about. Straight up, we were going to live here, and as time goes by, I plan to go back, visit the kids. No. That was it. No, this is not what, what, what we planned. Well, now, planned. you're no, a yeah, cold-blooded snake right now. Yeah, I'm assuming she's the one that's at least more true, because when she landed and you know, she was talking about what's the plan, and he, although, I don't know, I guess there's a chance we'd have to rewatch it. It's like watching a Sixth Sense over again, like, what were the things about? It just seemed like there was so many things indicating that he, because you'd think right away he would say like, so when are we going to the States? <laughs> or when she started talking about not wanting to live there with his family, you think he'd be like, well, yeah, of course, because we're going to the States. He never said things like that, right? So it just doesn't seem likely that he's telling the truth. You just really, 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 really hurt me. You showed me right, what it is, what it is, and what it isn't. Well, it is and it is. isn't yeah. about love. Yeah. It isn't yeah. about yeah. self-sacrifice. I, I will say, Debbie, at least right now, is exhibiting a kind of certainty that we don't usually see on this show. Usually it takes a long time for people to kind of wrap their head around what seemingly is happening in front of them. And of all the people, I wouldn't have thought Debbie would actually have. You'd think Debbie, De Debbie has a, a strong, assertive side to her, a very seemingly wise side to her, you know, because we haven't seen her 
have the need of that side of her yet. So it's good to see. It's kind of refreshing. It's just like at the when you start seeing the evidence, you just think, whoa, wow. And, you know, she's not throwing a glass of water in his face. She's not screaming. She's not hitting him. <laughs> she's just, wow, you are a scumbag, and I'm leaving. You know, it takes a lot of courage to open your heart after being closed for 12 years. I opened a little door, and a poem slipped through that door. And I was stupid to read it. There are poets in your town or county or state who probably would also love to date you and don't carry with it the risk that they're scamming you, you know? So I don't understand why people take that risk, especially when it takes so long to really get to know them, right? And there's just always these questions about, are they really into me? Are there, you know, there's always these questions. So I would hope that she just starts dating in her area. I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that would love, maybe that's a, one of the benefits of going on this show is your Instagram blows up and suddenly you're getting all these DMs from poets. <laughs> and I'll never read another poem again from another person. Now that I know how you really feel, I'm going back to the house, I'm packing my suitcases, I'm getting a hotel, and we're parting ways. Yeah, there's a, a, a certainty to her, a resolve that's very quickly happening, uh, refreshing in a way. Because so often you're just like, just go home, you know, Ben, go home, <laughs> that kind of thing. And she's like, yeah, okay, wow, I'm upset, I'm angry, I'm not going to lose my stuff here but I'm gonna tell you what's up and I'm going. Now, since they're together later in an interview, does he like somehow chase her and convince her and warm her up or something? I don't know. I feel used right now. And guess what? I deserve it for believing in him. Okay, that's his real card now. I mean, he certainly isn't uh, uh, giving us any data to go off of to indicate that it wasn't just for the green card. <laughs> Although there is a chance that he does want to be with her, but he doesn't know how to handle things. He gets over, he gets flustered or he feels insulted by what she was saying earlier. I don't know. On the plus side, if this is the end, does this mean Debbie's going to go on single life? All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.